cycle. Stay within the cycle. Learning from and being in the cycle. Amen. We've been staying in the cycle of God. And for those who have not been hearing, the mouthpiece is, okay, well, I'm about to take this off then because okay. I did that the last time. I, glory to God. I preached up a storm. I had this on and the mic in my hand. I was like, what in the world is this? Looking at myself, and I, I'm like, man, you got on two mics. Well, at least they were looking at me. They said, well, he's only human. Amen. Glory to God. I ain't dotting every I and crossing every T. And so tonight, um, I'm going to kind of, you know, I, I like to kind of stay in a pattern myself. I, I like to minister in a cycle. I don't like to minister this and then jump to this and then go over there to that and then jump way back over there. You may be like, oh, glory, what is going on? We don't went from one end to this end and back over here. I I kind of think everything is like a story, amen, and we're reading this book, and so it just flows from one chapter to the next chapter, and so because we have been talking about staying within the cycles of God, how to stay within the cycles of God, and so tonight, we're going to go another way, not away from the cycle, but we're going to say, let's pay attention Glory to God. Why are you in that cycle? Let's pay attention. I mean, know sometimes you can be in a classroom and you thinking about everything else, about what the teacher is talking about. You ain't paying attention to nothing they're saying. And then you miss something. And when it's time to take the exam, amen, you don't do too well. And here the teacher come by, amen, you know, she walks by and she put her little paper on your desk and she just slightly move on away. And you know that you ain't studied nothing, so you get your paper, you be like, oh, Lord, what is going on? <laughs> I used to do that all the time, man. I, 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 I'm serious. I used to do it all the time. I used to see, you know, uh, my classmates say, man, they throw it on there. They get their paper. They looking all good. They got an A and everything. And I get my paper, man. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what happened to this? Well, at least I passed. That's how I motivate myself. <laughs> at least I passed. How I many sometimes you got to motivate yourself? You know, David did that, amen. He motivated himself, amen. He said, listen, I killed a lion, I killed a bear, and you uncircumcised Philistine Goliath, I'm going to have your head too. And so he motivated himself, and we got to motivate ourselves. And so we got to motivate, be motivated, and we got to pay attention. So the title of the message tonight is Pay Attention in the Cycle. Pay attention in the cycle, for God is saying, for God is saying, he is saying something. Pay attention. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to look at chapter 2, verses 1 through chapter 10. This is going to be our foundation of Scripture and paying attention in the cycle of God because God is saying something. And how many know he's saying something to the church? Amen. When you have your Bible, say, I, I'm ready. Amen. Well, here we go. Um, First Corinthians, First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Our inheritance is through Christ's blood. How many know we have an inheritance? And it's through the blood of Jesus. And that is something we really need to pay attention to. Because everything we need, everything we desire, it is through the blood of Jesus that we will require and request things that we need to happen in our life. Amen. We put it before the blood of Jesus. That life cleansing blood. Wow. Glory. I just think about the blood. Something about the blood of Jesus. It cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 
Amen. You know, 1 John 1 and 7 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. But then if we have fellowship with one another, if we pay attention, if we pay attention. See, we have fellowship. When you're having fellowship, amen, that means that's two-way communication, amen. You're paying attention to one another. It says, if we walk in the light that he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us. Glory to God. He just cleanses. Glory. Amen. How many know when you're in the cycle of God, amen, that blood, it never loses its power. It's always cleansing. That's why God says, stay in the cycle. Stay up under my wings. He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide up under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I will say something. Then I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my what? My fortress and my God in whom I will trust. In my God, I will stay in the cycle. God says it's so important to stay in the cycle, church. We got to stay in the cycle because God is saying something. And so let's read 1 Peter chapter 2. It says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy. Look, look, we're laying aside some things now. Amen. God is saying now in the cycle, you need to learn this. You got to start laying aside some things. So if God's saying lay aside something, that means we've been holding on to some things. But God said, no, not so. Now, you're up under the cycle of me. You can't hold on to yourself. Amen? And so this is what Peter was saying. He says, therefore, saying, saying uh, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Amen? Let's get our mouth right. Let's get our mouth right. I tell you, you know, you can speak a thing, amen, it's just as worse as you touch a thing. Nonverbal communication is just as bad as, as uh, 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 verbal. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to say something, but if you're thinking it. So he says, lay aside all these things as new babes. Desire the pure milk. Desire the pure milk of the word. Sometimes in the body of Christ, we don't desire the pure things of God. We just, just allow somebody to say things to us, and we just receive it just from what we hear somebody say. We won't study to show ourselves approved, right or divide the word of truth. Amen. So we don't desire to get the truth sometimes. We, we're just comfortable with hearing what you have read and what you thought you have studied. Amen. He said, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow. And he said that is one of the criteria of growing, amen, that you will grow when you have a desire. And how many know we have to have this desire? A desire causes you to press. Having a desire for something, a want for something, causes movement. And it's continuous because I desire to go deeper. I desire to go higher in the things of God. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God. I'm pressing, glory to God. I'm not just standing still. I'm always moving. Amen? He says, uh, if indeed you have tested that, the Lord is gracious. In verse 4. It talks about us being this chosen stone, being his chosen people. So it says in verse 4, it says, coming to him as to a living stone. That's going to be on the test, knowing that you are a living stone. Glory to God. <laughs> Rejected indeed by men. See, men is not going to always like you, but you got to understand that in the cycle, I don't need you to always like me. Because I follow Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. So he says, but you are chosen by God and you are precious. And so God is saying, paying attention in the cycle for I'm saying something. 
And so God is giving the church a foundation. He says that you are a chosen person and you are precious. Some of us don't even believe that we are precious. You are a precious commodity. You have self-worth. And you have to know that you have self-worth. That way, you will not do or say anything that you want to say because you are precious. And you are an example for others, so you just cannot do anything that you want to do. And so when God is teaching this and when Peter is talking about this, it, it seems to be kind of difficult. You know why? Because we come a long way. We have come a mighty long way in which we were not living like this. We didn't have the attitude that he's talking about. We didn't really understand. We didn't know. We were not taught that we were very precious people. That we are a royal priesthood of a holy nation. We did not know that. And so if you don't know who you are, amen, you cannot become what God wants you to be. It's very difficult. And that way we'll settle for certain things. You know, you can live in poverty. You can live in a ghetto. You'll get to the point where you get used to living in poverty. You'll lose to living in a ghetto and you don't try to do no better. You just go on with life as though there's nothing greater. But the devil is a liar. Amen? Because God says, pay attention. I'm saying something. Amen? Oh, I love it. I love it when he is saying something. God is always saying something. And so in verse 3, he said, you are a living stone and being built up. I want you to pay attention now. Built up into a spiritual house. Not just a house. A spiritual house. We are spirit beings. We, we have a, a flesh, we have a soul, and we live in a body, but we are spirit. We are spirit. He said we live built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. He said, therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. It said, Behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. So he's telling you this foundation. He's telling you where he dwell. He's telling us where we dwell. Amen. But he's letting us know there's someone that's higher. And he being the chief cornerstone, he said, he said, I'm the chief cornerstone, I'm elect and I'm precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, and when you see therefore, they want to say, what is it there for? Well, what is it there for? To you who believe. To you who believe, it is there to let you know you are precious cornerstone to you who believe because if you don't believe it amen you're not going to walk in it do y'all hear what I'm saying God said we got to believe because see we are going through so many challenges in this new generation we're going through so much technologies have gotten so vast and great we don't know which way is up amen we got conspiracy theories we got this and we got that we don't know what to do we don't know what to believe and God is saying to the church pay attention I'm saying something and so what he is saying I'm going to give you the truth and sometimes we know the truth, and it's because it's not so repetitious, because we are not studying a lot to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, we forget all about the good things and all the promises of God that they are really a man. God said, all the promises that I've given you, they are yes, they are true, and they are a man. Meaning that you got to believe it, because if you don't believe it, you would not receive it to be able to walk in it. I tell you, I love talking about being in the cycle of God because he put me on a check every day. He helps me out, amen. I'm not so down on myself no more, amen. I, I really know I'm just a wretch undone. 
Amen. That when I'm weak, he's strong. Glory to God. So I don't mind being weak no more. See, I used to get caught up with, you know, I don't know about this. I got to elevate to that. I ain't worried about all of that. I'm weak. God said, you weak, I'm strong. And that's when God's going to begin to add to my life. The more you're weak in, the more he's going to begin to build you up and strengthen you and give you some muscles and give you some encouragement. How many know when you got everything, ain't nothing that he can give you? See, if you, if you got everything, if you, uh, you got it all going on, well, maybe that's why God don't talk to you. <laughs> maybe that's why he ain't talking, because you got it all going on. Well, if you got it all going on, what is it I need to tell you? You, you, you know everything. And, and praise the Lord if you caught up with that one, that you know everything. Yeah, he won't be speaking to you. Because God don't keep on trying to tell you which way to go. And, and he done told you this time and you won't listen to him. And I told you again, you still ain't listening. So God said, okay, I shake the dust off my feet. I'm gone. I stop, I stop dealing with you. I go to somebody else. I cross the hand. Have y'all heard how, the, how God does? He do a crossing of the hand. See, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, amen, and you be in a, an environment and you don't do it, and God is trying to get you to do something, glory to God, and you decide that you don't want to do it, he'll cross the hand. And then you begin to see somebody else doing what you thought you should be doing, and then you get an attitude where God said, I don't cross the hand. I've been speaking to you, and you ain't did nothing. Yeah, you, yeah, you have the ability, yeah, but you, 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 there was no movement because you knew everything. So I guess you just didn't feel like moving. God will cross the hands on you. He will cross the hands on you. You'll find yourself thinking about what it could have been. Amen. And then have the nerve to get jealous. Have an attitude to the person that's doing what you're supposed to do. Oh, my God. What you should have been doing all the time. You're going to have the audacity to have an attitude. And we're supposed to be helpers of one another. God said, pay attention. I'm saying something. He said, behold, I lay in Zion a cornerstone, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient. See, he has something for them as well. Amen. He said, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Glory to God. They stumble, being disobedient to the word. See, they are not paying attention. To which they also were appointed. There it goes. You were appointed, but you were disobedient, not paying attention, being disobedient, and God crossed the hand. But you are a chosen generation. See, he's still reminding you even though you have some faults. See, that's what's so powerful, though. That way you don't get down on yourself. See, people get down on themselves because they don't know who they are. They get down on themselves because they've been praying and praying and praying. I've been praying and praying and praying. And God, you ain't been delivering none of my prayers. I'm tired of going through this. I don't understand. You know, you said, you know, if I delight myself in you, you're giving desires of my heart. Well, I truly like myself in you, and, and but you ain't giving me the desires of my heart. I'm about getting tired of this. Because things just ain't happening for me. How many know sometimes we, 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 we don't want to wait? That's why it was so powerful in Isaiah 40 and 31. He said, they that wait. They that wait. Wait till you die. Just wait. Just keep on waiting. Because God knows you what you have need of. Because if you think about it, if it ain't being manifested, maybe it's something that you don't need to survive. 
See, we think we need certain things to survive, but maybe, maybe, just maybe not. Maybe you don't. Maybe you will be like Paul walked with the limp during his whole time, amen, because he wrestling with God, but hey, he had a thorn, amen, so that stuck with him for the rest of his life. How would it be if he's complaining about the thorn? He wouldn't have did, wrote all those epistles. He wouldn't have did all those great things for God if he was concerned about the thorn. In his flesh. And so because we are not being able to manifest things on our own or see things that we are believing God and praying for God, amen, it's, it's kind of like the law, amen, I do something and I get something. You follow me? If I give, I think I need to get something because I gave. But we are not under the law. We are under, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Give something to get something mentality. You better get up out of here. We are not under law, but under grace. And don't start sinning because it ain't happening for you. What then shall we sin because you're not under law, but under grace? No, no, no. See, just because you're under grace, don't get caught up. It don't make no difference. I just do what I want to do. I'm on the grace. He's going to forgive me. Well, come on now. Pay attention. Pay attention. In the cycle, God is saying something. Pay attention to where I'm going tonight. Y'all pay attention. It's going to help you. He says, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. He said, but you are, church, look at your neighbor and say, but I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I am his own special people. Church, we are special He know we all have faults. He said, but you're special. You're a royal priesthood. You're of a holy nation. You're a chosen generation. You're chosen. Glory to God. That is so powerful. Ooh. But he says, I chose you for this reason, that you may proclaim, <laughs> glory to God, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do you have any gratitude? Do you have an appreciation that I called you out of darkness? What is darkness the mess that you was caught up in? Whatever it may be, you fill in the blanks. I don't know your darkness. But I called you out of it. You look better now than you did before. Amen. See, there's hope. There is hope because he called you out of darkness and told you who you are. So God has said, no, it's time to start walking in who you are then. See, it's time to get a revelation that I am a royal priesthood, that I am a holy nation. Stop walking in it then. Pick your head up and stop holding your head down. Stop looking sad. You're not a Sadducee. Yeah. See, when things are going on, man, your face expresses how you feel. I can just start looking at people and I can tell that they ain't feeling too good. And when they're feeling good, oh, they all smiles and happy. You know? But when something's going on, Ain't paying attention. But God is saying, God is always speaking to the church. He's always speaking in the church. A four wall structure, a brick and mortar building, the church. 
Mm. The church. God is saying something. He says, He said, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of me who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people. Listen. He said, who once was not a people. <laughs> but what are now the people of who? God. Oh, y'all better get that. Who once was not a people, but now are people of God. See, you're not your own. You are owned by somebody, by God. God said, I bought you with a price. I take care of you. They don't like to hear that way. He bought you with a price. Yeah, he did. Bought you with a price. He shed his blood for you. Don't get so <laughs> high and mighty. Yeah. Yeah. In this generation, yes, you still were bought with a price. He made the sacrifice for us. You are not under law, but you are under grace. And under grace, you do things because you love God. <laughs> because God has bought you out of darkness. It should have been, oh, I'm so glad you opened up my eyes that I can see. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. And see, what happens is I can see all <laughs> obstacles. <laughs> I see all the distractions because I'm paying attention in the cycle of God because God is saying something. <laughs> He's saying something, church. You better believe it. He's always saying something. He's always saying something to you. Wake up in the morning expecting to receive a word from God. See, this is how people sometimes ask, how can I get close to God? You know, how, how can I build up my relationship, amen? Listen to him. Be ready. Wake up in the morning. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. I remember when that COVID first raised up his ugly head. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Boy, I saw the ceiling one morning. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Boy, because that before I went to bed that night, I was feeling so bad, I didn't know what was going on me. Probably wasn't nothing going on with me. I ain't had no COVID or nothing. But see, a mindset, God said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because that the pandemic and that COVID crap was messing with your mind. Somebody sneak. They don't just look. They pause. If he of Hutton speaks, everybody listen. And man, I couldn't have a sniffle of nothing. My mind running. I'm like, glory to God. I can't have nothing. I can't have no sinus issues. It can't be draining. You can't drain right now. You could have drained years ago, but at, at this moment, you can't drain on me. Don't you drain on me, Sinus. Because <laughs> it ain't just drain. I'm about to go down for the cow. <laughs> so, don't, don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. You can't go to sleep. Keep Stay awake. See, if you go to sleep, you may not wake up. I guess that was just me. Boy, I messed around and went to sleep. Didn't even know I fell asleep because I tried to stay up all night long. I tried to stay up. I said, no, as long as you keep your eyes open, my man, you, you're good. <laughs> so I woke up the next morning, and I saw the ceiling. 
I said, God, thank you, God, for waking me up in the morning. And, you know, it came back to me. I had been always saying, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I just heard somebody else say that. I ain't been thanking God about waking me up no morning because I felt like I'm going to always wake up in the morning. Don't you know we always wake up? So when something is so redundant, you don't even think about it. So you just say stuff. I thank you for waking up. Well, you don't know nothing else to pray about. I thank you for waking up. Please, okay, you're awake. You awake, you get up all the time, you're 40 years old, you awake, I woke you up 40 years. I thank you for waking up this morning, that's all you know. That's the only thing you can thank him for, there's a whole lot of things you need to be thanking him for. Not even knowing the revelation of what that is, but boy, when that COVID hit, <laughs> boy, I saw that ceiling that next morning. Boy, I, I saw what it meant to say, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. See, y'all ain't hearing me. I got a revelation that I was alive. I really was alive, boy. And I tell you what, when I went to, this, went to bed that night, I was so fearful. I didn't stand on none of that. God did not give you a spirit of fear. Well, I'm fearful. <laughs> you, you, I ain't ready to read that scripture right now. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm freaking out over here. And my baby didn't even know nothing about it. I was just in my mind. See, in your mind, man. That's why God said you got to get your mind right, man, because my mind was all over the place. She just, you, you knew I was going through. Well, why didn't you come to my rescue? Why didn't you calm me down? Oh, so now you have exposed yourself. I, I didn't even have to go through this because I'm really thinking about it. Now, she is a registered nurse, so she knew that hey, well, I was going to wake up the next day. So you didn't share that with me? Oh, my God. Oh, you did? You did? Why didn't you say peace? Peace be still. I needed some peace. Why you let me go through that, baby? I don't believe that. We'll talk about this after service. Oh, 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 man. It was by revelation. <laughs> well, I hope it helped somebody else because I tell you, you wasn't alone. Amen. I was right there with you. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. But God, pay attention now. Pay attention to him. Pay attention. God's saying something. And so verse, what was that? Verse number nine. He said, but you are a chosen generation. We got that. We're royal priesthood. We got that. We're a holy nation. We got that. We're his own special people. We got that. That we may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness. Stand to your feet and say, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me out of darkness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, no both sides. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seats. Amen. For bringing me out of darkness into your marvelous light. See, he didn't just bring us out of darkness, but he brought us into his presence. Into his presence. And in his presence, there's what? Fullness of what? Joy. And there's pleasures evermore. Amen. Glory to God. We glory. I love this. He said, who once were not a people. See, he had to remind you, we're not a people, but um, you are now the people of God. Church, let that be your foundation, that you are a people of God. You're going to go through some things. See, you're going to go through some things mainly because now you have chosen to be in the cycle of God. Cycles moves. It don't stay in one place, cycle, whatever kind of cycle you want to talk about, natural, nature, whatever. It moves. It never stays in the same place. And so now that you're in the cycle of God, amen, you, 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 you got to be excited about that. He said, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Man, I got it all going on. All I got to do is believe, believe and trust God, believe and trust God, stay in the cycle and never forget Isaiah 40, 31, the 
I'm, I, it's, it's some scriptures in that Bible, man, that's really got some good stuff. But that, Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait, that's really tangible. Because we have always been asking for stuff, and, and you know, we want things, believing and trusting God for things, but everything involves what? Waiting. And so we got to learn how to wait. Learn how to wait on God. And this is what God is teaching me in the cycle. I just got to wait. I got to go through these moments. I got to go through these moments when they're not good, when I don't feel good, even when my body don't feel good. I got to go through the moment. Because I'm going to wait on God because he said by his stripes I'm healed. I'm delivered and I'm made free. I'm whole. I got to stand on that and I got to believe and trust that. I can remember my wife was going to nursing school and I was in Iraq. I think I was in Iraq or over in Germany somewhere. But boy, she was having some issues. And she used to call me every morning and we would pray together. She would stop on the side of the road and pray. You know what I'm saying? She had to wait on God. But God pulled her through, man. She ended up being in the top of her class and was the oldest one in the class. She had to go through there talking about you old, you, you old. You know what I'm saying? Well, people don't want to hear all that stuff. If you ain't, if you're over 18, you're old. But she was the elderly person in the classroom. And they let her know that. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. But I ain't talking about that lady. I'm talking about you. I said that you were in the top. Didn't I say that? I didn't say you were the top. You were in the top. In the top. Because that's the way it is. You got to pay attention. God is saying something. That's why I said what I said. You had challenges. And you were one of the elderly in the classroom. Now you don't want to hear elderly. Well, one of the older ones in the class. What do y'all want me to say here? What is acceptable in 2022? Please, somebody tell me, please. You know that commercial? They're getting ready to have a shootout, man. They stand there. And people start asking questions. And everybody asks a question. And that guy said, Will somebody shut up, please? Let's get back to what we were getting ready to do. We're getting ready to have a battle here. I mean, y'all talking about something else. Now, what do y'all want me to call y'all people that's older than I am? See, I'm old. I'm old. I'm 68 years old. I'm old. So if y'all don't want me to call y'all old, I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. Okay. Don't y'all know this Bible study? You study a lot of stuff. And you learn that God is saying pay attention. Because everything that I'm saying means something. Trust me. And when y'all get home tonight, the Holy Spirit is going to kind of reveal to you what I was going with this. He's going, to hold, he's, going to, he's going to reveal some things to you. And he's going to attach some things to you. He's going to give you some foundation that you can identify. And he's going to help you to this next level that he's taking us. He's going to get you into a better place with him that you don't get so down on yourself. Amen. That you understand that you don't understand that, amen, when you fall down that you can get up. You're not so down on yourself. No, you're not perfect in that way, so don't be concerned about it. But know that God would never leave you nor forsake you. And God is always with us through thick and thin. Amen? Does that make any sense? So pay attention in the cycle, for God is saying something. Is God worthy to be highly esteemed church? Is he, is he worthy? I, I would just like to know that. 
Is he worthy to be highly esteemed for what he has done and what he is still doing in our life? How much do we pay attention to that and not pay attention to other things? Oh, how much do we pay attention to God is worthy to be highly esteemed? Because remember, he brought us out of what? Darkness into where? His marvelous light. So we are in his presence. And so you are telling me, is God, I want to know. I, I, I want to know. Is God worthy to be highly esteemed for what he has done? If that's true, say yes. And what he is still doing is, if that's true, say yes. That we would specially honor him for it. God is saying, will you honor me for that? So I'm going to read it without the other issues. Listen, is God worthy to be highly esteemed for what he has done? and what he is still doing in our lives, that we would specially honor him for it. Man, that is so profound. See, God was always a giver. He always gave. He gave his only begotten son. Jesus, his only begotten son, came up and just said, well, hey, I can top that, buddy. I give up my wife, too. He, he said, hey, 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 God, you yeah, did that. I'm giving up my life to And then the Holy Spirit topped that and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead you and guide you. I'm going to always be there for you. I'm going to make a sacrifice. And I don't care what you do and how you do it. I'm still going to lead you and guide you. See, see, his, his mission never changed. He, he's going to lead you and guide you whether you pay attention or not. When you decide to pay attention, amen, you just catch on. But he never stopped leading and he never stops guiding. That's what's so profound. All of the, all of the Trinity made sacrifices. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they made sacrifices. And God is saying we need to make some sacrifice. And he want to know, well, if, you know, is, is, am I worthy to be highly esteemed for what I have done and what I am still doing in your life? That we would specially honor him for it. See, we have to honor God. We're not honoring man. We're not honoring the church. We're not honoring the pastor. We are honoring God for what he has done. We're not honoring the law because we are not under the law. We are under God's grace. God came to give and he never stopped giving. He says, if it was that way before the law, how much more should we be esteemed under the new covenant? How many know we're in a new covenant? filled with better promises. In the book of Hebrews chapter 8 and 6 it says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. See, he has obtained a, a more excellent ministry. You and I, we are that most excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant. See, we're in a better covenant now. Why do we want to tap on something in the old covenant when we're in a better covenant? Filled with better promises. <laughs> Which was established on better promises. Scripture, New Testament. Pay attention in the cycle for God is saying. The church is not the building where we have worship services. <laughs> the church is not brick and mortar. The church is actually people. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Y'all better write that down. The church is people. As a believer, you are the temple of God. And see, that way you can't do what you want to do. He said, you are the house of the Lord. We are the church. We're not a building. He said, according to Peter, the church is made up of, oh, my God, 
lively stones. We are made up of not brick and mortar, but of lively stones. We are born again people who make up a, ooh, not a fleshly house, but make up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood of the most high God. Pay attention. God is saying. The church is not the building where we have worship services. The church is not brick and mortar. The church is people. As a believer, you are the temple of God. You are the house of the Lord. According to Peter, the church is made up of lively stones. Remember we talked about the chief cornerstone? Who make up a spiritual house and the holy priesthood of the most high God. Being a living, uh, a lively stone, being a living stone, a living stone we see as referred in verses 4 and 5. It says, he who was rejected by men. We are those lively stones who are being rejected by man. But we are chosen and we are precious by God. So we're not concerned with man. But we are concerned with what God has laid up for us. The stone is God's rule and reign. Therefore, as a son, we rule and reign. See, if he rules and reign, we rule and reign because we are son of God. As a stone, it represents the strength. It represents the steadiness and the durability. God said when you're facing challenges in your life, you got to show strength. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the things of God. Not in your things, but always abounding. We talked about on Sunday, abounding. Stand there. Stand put. Don't move. I don't care how the wind blows. You stay. You're abounding. You're not moving. You will not be persuaded. Glory to God. And you have durability. You're not so fickle. You're not going off because somebody say something. They can't define you. People are worrying about something somebody says. Oh, don't say that to so-and-so, so-and-so. Well, they can't define me. You can say what you want to say about me. You can't define me. You can say what you want to say to me. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? And this is what God is saying now. We need to know who we are. He said, pay attention. I'm telling you. You're a royal priest of the holy nation. That's who you are. And it doesn't matter about men saying nothing about you that they don't know about you. They cannot define you. Basically, they don't have a heaven and a hell to put you in. So why are you concerned with them? Pay attention in the cycle for God is saying. There's a difference as I close. There's a difference of being under the law versus being under grace. And we are under God's grace. There's a difference. The law was about you doing something so God can do something for you. Grace is about what God has already done. And you responding to his grace. What has he done for you? He made you a lively stone. He gave you breath. He's taking care of you. He's giving you employment. He's giving you a place to stay. He's showing you love. There's a lot of things God is doing. Well, more importantly, those believers who have a law mentality because of the way they have been taught are always trying to do something in order to get a blessing. See, do you do something because you're thinking you're going to get something? But that's not under grace. But those of you who truly understand we are under grace, 
have a mentality of knowing. I am. Look at your neighbor. I am already blessed. And I am responding to God because who he is. Come on, give God a big hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Pay attention in the cycle for God is saying something.